And the doctor said, sir, I'm sorry, but your daughter has genital warts growing through her throat. And the dad said, Mike, how could she get that? I don't have a sexually transmitted disease. My wife doesn't have one. And the doctor said, well, which one of you two had been sexually active before you're married? And the guy's eyes got big, and he said, well, my wife was a virgin, but I had been around. But look, doc, safe sex condom every time. And the doctor said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you haven't heard, but scientifically, safe sex is a joke. He said, sir, you've contracted human papillomavirus outside of marriage, carried it undetected into marriage. You've given this to your wife, and your child contracted this in her womb, and we'll need to periodically burn the warts off your daughter's throat with a laser because we don't have a cure for this. I'm sorry, sir, and your wife needs to start getting pap smears every year to make sure this doesn't, doesn't develop in a bad way for her. And the guy sat there, <laughs> and he was like, how come no one told me this? How come everyone just told me safe sex? How many people have this? How many people have it? This is a journal of gynecology, the British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. They just did a study of about 17-year-old girls who have only slept with one guy so far. They found out of the 242 women who would only had one sexual partner, we found that the risk of acquiring cervical human papillomavirus infection was 46%, meaning nearly half of the girls who would only had one sexual partner at the age of 17 already had HPV. The good news is the majority of people get it end up being fine. It doesn't cause many trouble. It usually goes away on its own. But it's so rampant now, it's causing some huge problems like cervical cancer. Why don't they want to tell you about it? Reasons like this. Cosmopolitan Magazine, all right? If your girls are not familiar with Cosmo, I, would, uh, I actually think that this is a great instruction manual on how to get used by a guy, all right? So all you do is you subscribe, you get used in like three weeks. It's really quick. It's great. Um, and, and, and some girls will say, oh, that's not true. You know, they got great makeup tips. I'm sure they do. Check out what it says on the cover. Pick him up tips from the editors of Maxim, Maxim Magazine, that runs a, an article on how to cheat on your wife so she and the kids won't find out. You're learning how to pick up these guys. And then it says, and more, no-brainer lines. No-brainer lines. You want them to think you're smart, and you start off meeting with a no-brainer line. This stuff is a joke. It says here, gynecologist news your doctor's too wimpy to tell you. So you're like, OK, more eternal wisdom from Cosmo. Open it up, and it says here, dear teenage girls, to make sure you don't get a virus during sex, it's, first it doesn't give you the option of abstinence if you're worth waiting for. Then it says, examine the condom tip for tiny holes before sex to make sure that no viruses will sneak through during sex. Hmm, thank you. Uh, they sort of skipped out the fact that condoms are useless in preventing HPV. They sort of skipped out the fact that you can get every STD virtually now by means of oral sex. Why didn't they tell you that? Because 10 pages later, they recommend you give your boyfriend oral sex so he likes you more. This stuff is an absolute joke. Why doesn't anyone else talk about it? Well, this I just got off Planned Parenthood's website for teens. It says, sexuality relationship info you can trust from Planned Parenthood. And here it comes. Quote, condoms can be an exciting part of sexual relationships. Hmm. You know, it used to be like falling in love, candlelight dinners. Now it's condoms, so romance is always alive and well with Planned Parenthood. And it says here, it says, it says if you act responsibly and use protection every time, you can have a fulfilling sex life no matter what infection you may have. Hmm, thanks, but no thanks. I mean, protection? What kind of joke is this? There's a huge billboard in San Diego near the beach where I surf at called Pacific Beach. And a billboard, all these guys on it, and it said, protect yourself, protect your partner, protect your community, wear a condom. You know, like you're a patriot or something. Protect the community with my condom. This stuff <laughs> is a joke. I mean, think about it. Who do you protect yourself from? Your enemies. If you have to protect yourself when you're supposed to be making love and totally giving yourself to someone, it means the timing is off. Wait for marriage. If you want to protect yourself, forget it. Protect your wife, guys, by not sleeping around now so your wife won't end up with cervical cancer. You girls, protect your children who could get STDs if you're promiscuous. Protect them. Lay down your lives for them to guard these people. Why doesn't the government talk about it? Well, here's the big research that the government did. National Institutes of Health did this huge study on condom effectiveness. This is the most authoritative research that has ever been done in the history of the world on condoms. And what they found is this, for men. They said for men, we do not have sufficient scientific evidence to prove that the condom can protect men from six of eight of some of the most common STDs, and we do not have sufficient scientific evidence to prove that the condom can protect women from seven of eight of some of the most common STDs. I read this, then I read it again. I'm like, how come they're teaching safe sex? I found in a little footnote in it. It said, if you want to get the audio tapes of this conference, send us $200 and we'll give them to you. So I said, fine. I cut a check for 200 bucks, mailed it to DC, and in the mail came two, 20 hours of audio tapes. I started listening to them. 
14 hours into it, I found what I was looking for. They had this conference, about 30 doctors, gynecologists on stage, and a huge crowd of people. And you could ask them questions. One lady gets up in the back, and she says, doctors, shouldn't we tell teenagers about HPV? And the doctor gets up, and he said, he said well, we may want to go there. But he said, look, he said, we have secondary prevention methods. I didn't know what that means. It means burning it or freezing it off of a girl's cervix, which can keep her to have, from having kids. But he says, oh, we've got secondary prevention methods. And then he said, look, he said, if you told teenagers about HPV, he said it would cause an epidemic of panic, fear, and anxiety amongst young people who are just starting their sexual careers. Ha, ha, ha. And all the doctors laughed. Our sexual careers, like we're budding prostitutes or something. You talk about an insult to your dignity, no self-control. I will tell you no self-control. I bought Kristalina for her birthday a chihuahua, right? One of these little glorified rat dogs. And, you know, this little fur-bearing cockroach is like running all over the place. And we actually just blew up a picture of him so you could see what we're talking about. So here's, here's the little freak of nature. Um, and, you know, the little guy here recently hit puberty, okay, when the dogs are in the heat, and he, he's incapable of abstinence. I even gave him a chastity talk. It, it didn't go so well. Uh, and he didn't get it, so what we had to do is we took him to the vets down at Pacific Beach, and we neutered him. There's no option for a chihuahua in heat. So here's a picture of him after the surgery. He's got his little satellite dish on his head and everything, a little salad bowl there. He's pretty miserable. And this is how the government basically sees you. Look, teens, you're incapable of self-control. Neuter yourselves with contraception so you can have lifeless love. I happen to have a lot more confidence in you, so does Kristalina, and she'll share some jazz about it, too. A couple things. When I was in high school, I would, I would hear things like this about STDs and whatnot, and I would be freaked out because I knew the lifestyle I was living and there were chances that something may be wrong with me. But when I turned my life around, there were certain things I needed to face head on, and one of them was getting tested. So for those of you in the audience that have been sexually active, you've got to go get tested and do this with a little urgency. Just because you feel fine, you look fine, you may not be so fine. And I've met several high school girls who have HPV. They didn't want to deal with it, they didn't want to go get tested, and the cervical cancer got so bad they had to remove part of their cervix. Don't put it off. Now if you want to get tested, what you can do is go in the phone book, Go in the yellow pages under abortion alternatives and there should be some good crisis pregnancy centers and clinics. Some of them you can just go to, others you need to call up and say, look, I'm not pregnant, but where can I go get tested? Usually it's free and it's safe and within a couple of days you can know if something's going on with you. And don't go to a uh, dump like Planned Parenthood and a lot of these places, they offer you condoms, they offer you birth control, but I have the utmost confidence in every single one of you. You don't need their birth control because you have the self-control and you're better than that. So to go get tested. Now enough net bad news about STDs and whatnot. What is some good news? How can you actually live this life lifestyle out? A couple of things. The first and foremost, for those of you that are in a sexually active relationship, to take the sex out and really see what your relationship is based upon. Because if you take the sex out, it will give you the clarity of mind to step back and say, okay, is this love? or is this lust? Are they using me? Do they really love me? What's going on? And really put your love in the light and see what it's made of. Because if you take the sex out and you end up fighting and arguing, you end up breaking up, you're probably better off without that person to begin with. But if you guys end up staying together, what peace of mind knowing that that person is in it for you and not what you're giving them? That they love you as a person and not what you're doing with them? That is peace of mind right there. So to have the guts and courage to take it out and see what it's made of. The second thing, right now Jason and I, we're training ourselves in faithfulness. Chastity trains you in that faithfulness. Because one day when we're married, I'm just gonna be nine months pregnant, ready to go, and Jason is gonna be at work. And he might have some cute little hot secretary now. Do you think the same temptations won't be there just because he has a ring on his finger? Of course not, they're still gonna be there. But the thing is, he's trained himself in faithfulness now, so within marriage, he can be all the more faithful to me. So to train yourselves in faithfulness. And I know a lot of you are dating right now, and realize most of you right now is dating someone else's future spouse. To guard that person, protect that person, as you would want your future spouse guarded and protected in the same exact way. Now when you date someone, to raise your standards high. And I know a lot of people say raise your standards high. When I say that, 
Never have to lower yourself to date anyone. And I know a lot of people do that. And you know when you do that. But to keep your standards high because 